Welcome to an in-depth look, our show that really focuses in on technology. In the next several episodes of an in-depth look, we'll feature how to build the ultimate home theater system. This first episode will focus on the gorgeous over-the-air over HD broadcast that you can pick up for free, probably right now. Also, I'll talk about how I record and capture that in a completely non-DRM'd way that's playable on pretty much all devices. Also in this episode, a sneak peek at the Xbox Media Center system. It's, it's really a, a sneak peek. There'll be a full review, complete episode on Xbox Media Center, the open source Media Center software, in a future episode. Be sure to catch part two of this episode, which will come out in a couple of days probably, that will feature how I play back this high definition content in my home theater, and the way I do it might surprise you. I didn't build a PC to do it. I wanted to keep it simple and the spouse approval high, but I'll save that for episode two. Enjoy episode one of an in-depth look, over the air HD. <laughs> Hey everybody, today I want to talk to you about how to build the ultimate home entertainment system using Linux. And I'm not talking about like a mediocre home entertainment system with one 30 inch TV that watches standard def resolution stuff. No, I'm talking ultimate. Multiple high definition TVs, multiple high definition sources, over the air HD broadcasts, Blu-ray movies, upscale DVDs and how you can get them throughout your house powered by Linux. Now, there's a lot of different options, so I'm only going to touch on a couple today. Um, one of them is a software project that I've been watching carefully for quite a while, I've talked about it on the show before, and that's XBMC or Xbox Media Center. The history with Xbox Media Center was it was originally developed for the original Microsoft Xbox, but only for hacked Xboxes. Now, the lifespan of those original Xboxes is starting to come to an end. So they've taken the project and they've released it for all the major platforms. We've got it for Linux, Mac, and for Windows. It's still in pretty early stages, but it's coming along really good. Even now we're starting to see some packages for your favorite distribution, but it's still recommended you probably want to build it from source, so I'm not going to really touch on it today, but it's definitely something to keep your eye on because it's pretty awesome. Now this up here is a Myth TV system. It's a Myth front end. I'll talk about more of I'll go more into details on that later. And I, I have both Myth on here and Xbox Media Center, and I'm just kind of using both of them to kind of see which one I like best. I think probably for movies, it's Xbox Media Center, but for live TV playback, you really can't beat the Myth front end, back end combination. So on this particular segment for this week's episode, I'm gonna cover how to get HD into your house using over the air HD antennas like 50 bucks and you can get amazing quality HD in completely unencrypted, no DRM, it's great. And how you can play that back, maybe in your living room, with a fairly straightforward setup through something a little unconventional. I'm not, gonna, I'm not talking about like a Myth TV front end, I'm going to go a little bit more simple, plus it has some other benefits. That's right, I'm talking about a PS3. Why not get a Blu-ray player, a video game player, and HD TV in your living room? So we'll talk about that today in this segment. One of the important aspects to your home entertainment system is something that I took for granted for a really long time, and that's actual TV broadcasts. For the most part, I was a, oh, I'll just Netflix it, buy it on DVD kind of guy, figured I didn't need to watch live TV. But when I transitioned to that way of watching TV, I realized that I missed out on important newsworthy events like presidential debates or hurricanes and things like that. And so I began to want some live TV again, but I wasn't really willing to pay $85 plus per month, what it is here in my area, for Comcast or other cable TV, and satellite wasn't really going to work for me either. So I started looking into something called over the air HD TV. This just uses a simple $50 antenna. Now, this antenna should be on your roof. I have it down here on the ground so that way I can show it to you and I don't have to go up on the roof. I live about 30 miles away from the broadcast stations in downtown Seattle and this is still able to pick it up even here on the ground. I have it running and just using a standard cable coax connection in the back of my Myth TV box. Myth TV detects the capture card which supports these types of digital broadcasts and brings it in and records in MPEG-2 format. The quality you get off this kind of setup surpasses cable TV and, and satellite TV by quite a bit. To put it in perspective, 
This starts around 16 and goes up to about 18 megabits a second worth of video information. Something you'll get over your local cable usually is in the four to eight megabit range. That's a huge difference when this starts at 16 megabits and some of those are starting at four megabits. So that's one thing to consider. Then there's also the fact that this is free. Now I can't get some of the fancier pay pay-per-view and HBO type channels, but for my local news and things like that, it's an awesome supplement to my DVD library. Over the Air HDTV works great with Myth TV and it's been a huge addition to my home entertainment system. I thought really quickly before I showed you the living room interface, the 10 foot away interface, I'd show you how I have things set up here in my office where we record the show. I apologize, the light's a little bad. I didn't uh, set up the main lights that we do when we record the show uh, just for this quick segment. So this, where I bring everything in, on the other side of these curtains, are my window is my window and outside of that you saw where I had the over-the-air HD antenna. I bring it in through the wall there to my Dell computer that I bought from Dell running Ubuntu where I have a stock Ubuntu installed and I just loaded the Myth TV packages. App get install Myth TV, you go through a few prompts and you're basically done. Now I have a Win PVR like 150 or something like that. I forget the exact details, I'll I'll try to dig those up for the show notes. It's fully supported under uh, Myth TV, which is perfect for me. Myth TV runs through an automatic scan process of all the different signals that it picks up and then it goes out and it gets the TV information for those particular um, channels and what's airing at that time and you get the TV guide interface based off of that. So then I bring it into this Dell here and I've set it up where I can record only one channel at a time because I only have one capture card. That's that's the, that's the key. If you want to record multiple different shows airing at the same time, you'll need multiple capture cards. Not a big deal though because Myth TV is fully set up to support that. Once all that's brought in, I have it configured to record and save off to a network share. Now, the key thing that I do is I have every single show have the commercials removed after it's been grabbed. Now, Myth TV has a bunch of different kind of unique ways to do that based on uh, loudness, uh, the fading out that shows usually do. And that little network logo you that's usually down here in the corner that fades out right before the commercial kicks in. Myth TV can watch for all of that and then cut the commercials out. Now, why is that so key for me? Because I'm recording in HD. HD is huge. Anything I can do to remove the file size, anything I can do to reduce the file size is key, right? So if I'm taking out 15 minutes worth of commercials, well, that's a significant amount of file size. I can also re-encode, um, but I'll talk about it in the next part of this segment, um, why I still leave it in the default MPEG format. Now, the other thing that's really great is this capture card has an MPEG encoder built into it. What's that mean? That means that when my, t when my computer here is recording HD television, it's it's hardly being used. I've, I've brought up System Monitor and I've watched the processors. It's, it's nothing. It's not even like, it's just a tiny, tiny bit. It's, mo it's mostly disk I.O. Otherwise, the capture card grabs everything. Now that does mean that capture card gets a little hot. So that's why in my situation here, I have the capture machine in the back room. So that way if the fans do need to kick up, I don't have to hear it out in my living room or upstairs where we have the other TV set up. So once that's all captured and saved off, I can then watch it on my main TV. If I want to watch live TV, I have to have a Myth front end box. Now this computer here serves as a Myth front end and back end so I can watch live TV right here in my office while I work or upstairs where I have our second Myth front end only computer which connects down to this computer. In my living room I have a little bit different of a setup. Be sure to catch part two of building the ultimate home theater system when I go over how I get all of that HD content and some backed up movies into my home theater system. I think you're gonna find that the way I do it is slightly unconventional or at least probably not what you expect from a big Linux supporter like myself. That's going to be in episode two of An In-Depth Look. <laughs>